I wanted a lot of the songs on the record to be really kind of direct. I, I think that the world is so mysterious and so uh, scary and, and kind of terrifying right now. It just felt really weird to try and write puzzles and kind of disjointed, non sequitur type imagist kind of lyrics. Well, I kind of think right now is a pretty good time to just sit down and sing people some motherfucking songs, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, that's all I really want right now is I just want somebody to sing me a song, <laughs> you know. I really was consciously trying to just write these crystallized ideas kind of songs, you know, like this is like just one idea, just, I'm just going to try and get it across. Belleville has parades a lot, like any other small town, and one of the problems with having parades in Belleville is there's one main street, there's Main Street, and Belleville's a very long, like boomerang-shaped city, and so Main Street goes, I've heard one time that it was the longest Main Street in America, and it's like, seriously, it's like 17 miles long or something like that, it's like this, you know. So, so the parade goes down Main Street, People line up along the parade route. If you're a, if you live on the the west side of town, you need to get onto the east side of town. There's really nothing you can do. You have to wait the entire day to go across town. You know? So this happened to me once, just trying to get home. I got all the way home from somewhere, like pretty fairly far away. I don't remember exactly. This was a long time ago, and I just remembered this experience. So I get all the way home except I pull up to the, the, the stop sign at Main Street and there's a crowd of people in my way and there's a parade going through. So I, I can see my house <laughs> but I have no choice but to sit and watch the parade and I thought that that was a pretty, you know, um, there's something poignant about that, there's something nice about that and at the same time sort of sad, <laughs> you know. Uh, because it was a rainy day, it was a repair parade in the rain, and and there were still a lot of people there, and you know it was hot, but it was raining, so the windows down in the car, so it was like raining in the car, watching the parade, you know, just watching people getting drunk. It's all the stuff that's kind of in the song, you know, and then all the colors, maroon, you know, whatever. Those are the school colors in the school in Belleville, you know. And my mind in the song is like just kind of. Uh, having that time to pause and think and look across the street at my house or where I needed to go with maybe time enough to make the decision to leave. Oh, the band moss on information Brassels facing Tunes I couldn't play Window Open and bringing in maroon, yellow, blue, silver, gray. The drums will ricochet off the old buildings downtown, empty so long ago. Broken and dreaming So happy to leave what was my home With the sky blue sky This rotten time Wouldn't seem so bad to me now didn't die, I should be satisfied, I survived, it's good enough for
sky This rotten town Wouldn't see So bad To me now Oh, if I didn't die Should I be Satisfied I survived It's good enough Oh, now but maybe two or three songs were done kind of sitting uh, with very few overdubs, sitting, you know, in a circle. Uh, almost everything that every, everyone played is what's on the track. And, you know, uh, so I guess basically live is what you'd say. We were in front of each other. It wasn't like, I mean, I, I don't know about the past Wilco records, but I know how it is working on other records. You know, the basic track is done and then it's overdub time and then everybody leaves and goes and does their thing and then the one person who's overdubbing is there in the room, kind of like doing their thing and then you sift through what, you know, all the things that have happened. But in this case, we were actually arranging all right, you know, fa face to face. So by the time, you know, the performances happened, Everybody knew what everybody was doing and could play off of that instead of instead of like taking a you know a mountain of overdubs and then putting them in their places. You know we had already done that you know live. It was recorded all at the loft. We were you know Nels and, and T J and I were staying there, so it was like day and night you know rock boot camp, <laughs> and we would just wake up and make some food. Everybody would show up. We would record for the afternoon and then uh, drink some tequila and go get some dinner and <laughs> go to bed and do it again the next day. You know, I was big on, on uh, not just Hendrix and the birds and the Buffalo Springfield, but big on uh, a lot of sort of like traffic and, and, and certainly, um, you know, humble pie and Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs, and Englishman, I'm finding these things are leaking out more and more out of my consciousness playing with Wilco than I ever imagined. And, you know, instead of doing a process like Yankee where there was a definite idea of, you know, covering up these, these simple folk songs with layers of different sound textures and, you know, providing soundscapes for these songs to take them out of context, there was an acceptance on his part and everyone else's to just let the songs be what they are, you know, not try and dress them up any fancy way, just um, to be honest with them and just play them and record them.
So I've had a poem like based around those kind of those that idea and those words for a while. Um, I think originally when I wrote um, the poem, I was kind of hinting around at the idea of like where does you know where do you start to see um, where does it cease to be impossible when you like think about the the, the what a, what a country or a place can become <laughs> or how when do you when do you when does it stop being something unbelievable and something that you act upon to like try and change uh, when you realize that within yourself there's something that you really need to, to fix you know basically when do you wake up from denial um, uh, which you know it's like um, as, a, as, a, as the lyrics kind of evolved into the song a little bit more, the way it fits into the record, it became more, um, um, you know, the idea of like kind of getting out of denial was kind of waking up where you are in your life, you know. And I think a lot of times, uh, um, uh, well, in a very personal way, you know, it's nice to wake up in my life and realize that I had so many really great people around me. And um, my wife in particular, you know, there's a lot of songs and my wife's been through a lot. So there's, I can't really uh, say en enough things about, you know, on a really super personal level. Something that meant a lot to me uh, writing the lyrics is that that I really wanted Sue to have a good record to listen to that didn't have a lot of um, the um, more troubling aspects really kind of underlined you know but this is like the first record um, uh, really consciously kind of thought I want to sing straight to her and kind of make it up a little bit you know there's parts of your life you go through and you just don't know where you are and you know you could be anywhere or anything could be happening and hopefully you wake up and there's somebody you know that you can trust next to you and, and they've been there.
since a ghost is born and since I went through the process of being in the hospital and getting healthy, it's been a huge anxiety for me to know if there was like a some kind of zero sum game that was being, you know, played in terms of can I create without this this tension, this anxiety within myself. When things first started when we first started recording and things started happening and things were happening in the way that they'd always happened. Uh, lyrics came the same way they'd always came for me. Uh, songs just sort of felt like, wow, that where did that song come from? Well, I, it just, things started just happening the way they've always happened. And once everything just kind of like um, became apparent that not only were things going to be uh, the way they've always been. This is something that I love to do and it's it's not I wasn't making I didn't have to make that trade. I didn't have to trade health for creativity and and once that became really apparent it was a, an enormous relief. <laughs>
you have a song, is that the thanks, I guess? Yeah, uh, right. I think there's always been collaboration. Collaboration's always been a big part of Wilco. That's one of the reasons the records all sound so different. You know, there's different people in the band every time, and they've all had a hand in making it what it is. And I think that the, I think this time though, I think that the collaboration fit easiest. We fit together the easiest. Uh, the collaboration felt the least uh, forced or the most comfortable collaboration. You know, some people might think that that's not necessarily a good thing because a lot of times it really helps to have some sort of foil or, you know, some sort of uh, uh, agitation or, you know, uh, that I've found to be a myth. <laughs> Experiencing it this way for, you know, first time I think maybe ever is it's much more pleasurable to just kind of like all be pointed in the same direction. You know, each lineup that I've been a part of has its, its charms and things that I like about it, but um, this particular lineup seems, you know, kind of like the definitive lineup for for, I've heard Jeff say that, I've heard John say that, and for me, you know, it feels the most comfortable. I'm walking I'm by myself I was talking to myself about you
there can be a lot of anxiety with that. You know, being a part um, or being at the center of an organization in a lot of ways that, you know, a lot of people depend upon, you know, um, for their livelihoods or, you know, just... Uh, um, um, there's also a lot of anxieties and pressures that come from having fans, having people say they like you, you know, say that they want you to keep being something that they can like and believe in, you know. There's, um, those are all the kinds of pressures and anxieties I've always felt embarrassed admitting before, you know, because it seems like such a small price to pay compared to something like, you know, and I've always felt like, you know, my dad worked on the rail railroad for 46 years, you know, I'm going to complain that I, I feel bad that I had to stand and have, a, you know, people pick, take my picture all day long or something, you know, that's, that's yeah. not that bad. You know. We've all grown up a lot, you know, there's a lot to, there's a lot to be said for that, you know, I'm, I'm uh, happy for every gray hair that I have. <laughs> I think that it's all probably, you know, just allows me to let, be a lot more comfortable in my skin, you know. i
a, it's just a record of songs by a band that feels really comfortable with the notion of just sitting down and playing some songs together with the idea that that's kind of all it really needs to be right now <laughs> is to hear, just to sit down and play some songs for people. And I think it would be more brave this time around. I honestly, this, there's some thought in my head. It's like, I think it would be really more, way more brave to just say, I want, I'm gonna come to you. <laughs> I really want you to hear this. And um, really put your, your uh, stick your neck out and just say, I, re I really want to tell you something. I really want you to love this. I really want you to know that I care that you love this. And what's wrong with that? I'm just, I, I, that's what it, I'm here for. That's what we're here for, I want to communicate. Says you're not there. 
Time. 